Have you ever had a time where you saw something or maybe you heard something and it didn't feel quite right, but you did nothing? And maybe later on wondered, I wonder what that was all about. One in four of us experience domestic violence in our lifetime. That could be one in four of your family, one in four of your friends, one in four of your neighbors, one in four of your work colleagues. Since 2001, there have been around 100 deaths from terrorism in Britain. It's roughly about six a year. Seems quite low when you think of the hype and um, publicity around anti-terrorism strategies. And it's because we no longer tolerate terrorism. And that was pretty clear from the attacks we saw recently, where people stepped in. They stopped, put a stop to it, because we don't tolerate terrorism. But what happens when that's going on next door? Or if it's going on with your family, or your friends, or maybe with people at work? What do we do about it? Two women are killed every week by a former partner as a result of domestic violence. It's pretty shocking. Raise your hand if you have a pet. Okay, cool. This is my gorgeous Border Terrier, Millie. And I chose this picture um, to show you that pets really do show emotions, they feel emotions, they have emotions. And this was taken a few days after we said goodbye to her mum. And she was totally lost without her mum. Um, and obviously the whole family were grieving for our Molly. Um, and this was to show that, that actually... And, and she, she was like that for a good few months. So dogs really feel emotions, as do um, most animals. According to research that's about to come out at the University of Bristol, 66% um, of survivors of domestic violence said that their pet was a factor in making the decision to leave a violent relationship. All of them either stayed where they were, went back, or delayed, delayed leaving because of their pets. They didn't want to leave their pets behind. And we know that most shelters and refuges and housing associations can't take pets. So they don't really have any choice, do they? These are some of the comments that survivors made. They wanted a safe place for their pet. They wanted help finding accommodation for their cat. They didn't want their pet to be killed. And they wanted their pet to still be with us because pets are also killed in instances of domestic violence. He got my pet rabbit and was holding her by the neck, threatening to kill her if I didn't let him in, for some of the things that they do. Leaving is not an option. The abuse is so emotional, and he used to beat the dog to punish me. Let me take you back to 2001. So I'm a qualified veterinary nurse, and I'm part of a a committee that runs CPD meetings, continuing professional development meetings for vets and nurses. And we're at Glasgow Vet School, it's a cold November evening, and the speaker is uh, Dr. Helen Munro, and she's come to talk to us about new research that she's done into non-accidental injuries in animals. It's been a long day and I'm quite tired, but then I hear the words, um, the injuries that we see in animals are identical to the injuries that we see in children. She's got my attention now. Followed by harrowing pictures. A picture of a dog with cigarette burns all over it. Followed by a picture of a child with cigarette burns all over him. A picture of a cat with a spiral fracture caused by being grabbed and thrown. A picture of a child with a spiral fracture from being grabbed and thrown. Case after case where the injuries were identical and some of them were happening in the same household. And so Dr. Helen Monroe said, when you go back to work and tell your colleagues about this, they won't believe you. Because 10 years ago, doctors didn't believe that parents would do that to their children. Vets won't believe that people would do that to their pets. And so the Lynx Group was formed. 
a multi-agency group tasked with raising awareness of the link between animal abuse and human abuse, educating vets to recognize non-accidental injuries, and how to help the client, who might be a victim themselves, or they might be the perpetrator. And also educating um, healthcare professionals in how to understand um, animal welfare, so that if they go into a home to support a family, they could notice whether there's any issues going on with the pet and, and know how to deal with that as well. The um, American Humane Society coined the phrase, when animals are abused, humans are at risk. And when humans are abused, animals are at risk. And we're seeing more and more research coming out that is showing this to be true. Let me tell you a story. A story about Tyson. Now, Tyson is a Staffy Cross. He's about two years old. And the RSPCA were called to Tyson's home because the neighbors had reported a lot of shouting and screaming, and they'd heard the dog making a terrible noise. As the inspector knocks on the door, the door opens, and Tyson comes to the door, with his owner, of course. The RSPCA inspector noticed that Tyson's eye was bloodied and swollen, and that he was limping. So what's happened here then, she said. Well, um, uh, he fell down the stairs. Oh, OK. Have you taken him to the vets? Uh, no, no, I've no money. I can't afford that. OK. Well, it, it looks quite bad. I think you might need to see a vet. Can I come in and have a look? On further questioning, Kevin, Tyson's owner, admitted to beating the dog. You see, Kevin's partner, Kylie, was expecting their first child, and the maternity suitcase was at the top of the stairs, ready to go when she went into labor. And the dog had chewed the suitcase and wrecked it. Kevin had beaten the dog and thrown it down the stairs. The RSPCA inspector managed to persuade Kevin to sign the dog over to them. So Tyson, for Tyson, it's good news. He got the veterinary treatment he needed, and he got, went to a loving home, and he lived happily ever after. Three months later, Kevin was arrested for the murder of his baby son, Alfie. Initially, he told the police that the baby fell down the stairs. And on further questioning, he admitted to shaking the baby and throwing him down the stairs. So what do we do about all this? Because we know what we know about the link, we're getting the animal welfare agencies to work more closely with social services and the police so that when we notice animal abuse, we're reporting it to social services. When we see child abuse or human abuse, we're reporting it if there's an animal involved to the animal welfare agencies. We're starting to get better at that. But what's the big idea? Let's create a culture of kindness where its absence becomes a red flag that something isn't right, There's not something is wrong. Managers, business owners, human resource professionals all need to be aware of domestic violence because one in four of their employees could be affected. They need to understand it. It could be contributing to workplace absence. It could be contributing to um, poor performance. So when we're dealing with these things in the workplace, we need to make sure that we have an understanding of domestic violence and how to support and how to signpost. So the next time you see something that doesn't seem quite right, then just say something. Do something about it. We all have a duty. Thank you.